We are live from the Giant Bomb Podcast Studio. We're going to hit him with the high. Hit him with the it's high. It's the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy Podcast with your host, Mr. Brian Tong. Hit him with the high. Hit him with the high. Damn, I like that, Beach. And welcome, everybody, to the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy. You know how we do it. It's extra munchy. This is episode 64, according to my sources. Is that correct? That Did is you? correct. That is correct. All right, episode 64. A lot of great stuff to talk about in the show this week. We do have to talk about... Obviously, the MacBook Pro reviews are in. Uh, we we kind of really covered that with a special edition of our show that we dropped for you just a few days ago. So if you want to talk about that, we can. But again, this show is all about you. It's not about us. We want you to call us at 1-800-616-2638. Leave your name, where you're from, your comments, suggestions, your bad apples, your good apples, anything. We're here. Our phone line was actually, our phone lines, we didn't really clean it out, basically. Yeah, I we think got that, a couple. I think it though. might be full. We gotta. It I is, gotta check on that. It is full. Oh yes, it's full. It's completely full. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a couple calls, so let's just jump into the week. That is everything Apple again. This is kind of a compliment, complimentary piece to our video podcast. But we can get a lot more in depth. We can go back and forth, and we have the lovely musings of Stephen Beecham, who makes this show possible. Yeah. I'm here, making it possible. If you weren't here, this This first story I'm excited about, actually. You are excited about this. Okay, well, let's just jump right into it. According to Business Insider, Apple has a secret team working to make the iPhone's camera what they call a portal to augmented reality. Now, I want to give you guys and gals a little history about this. Tim Cook has outright basically chosen augmented reality as the platform that Apple is looking to go with moving forward. He's said it in multiple interviews with Good Morning America. He recently, I can't remember what college he was at. I don't want to say it was Boston College, but I believe it was in that area. He uh, was there on campus doing a speech. He also talked about augmented reality. He's done it on the earnings call. Augmented reality is the direction Apple is going to go in. He's many times stated that it's more of a social experience, which is true, where instead of VR, where you're wearing these goggles slash head this headset display, heads up display, and you're in your own world, which is awesome, right, Beecham? Totally. Change your life. I love being in my own world. What what, what oh, was it? HTC Vive uh, Star Wars preview? Yes. Change your R2D2 life. R2D2 handed me a lightsaber, and then I battled stormtroopers. All right. Don't 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 get me all <laughs> don't get me all worked up already. I mean, I just got a little wet just now. <laughs> but Apple... It's so fun. Augmented reality is what Apple's doing, and um, what they're trying to do right now, um, kind of their initial phase is into this transition of a feature that they believe is going to be big. According to the Business Insider, Apple is integrating augmented reality technology into the iPhone's camera app, according to a person familiar with this. Now, this involves a lot of different teams from the startups that they have acquired over time, but Apple wants to put this technology into users' hands. Uh, They've hired experts in head-mounted displays. Um, Companies are also obviously competing against them. We have Microsoft doing the HoloLens, uh, Facebook has been reportedly working on something like this. Snapchat's spectacles. The spe- this is like, yeah, this is like a mashup of spectacles kind of and Google Glass. It's like, a, yeah, it's like both. It's it's, weird. it's gonna be cool. So this is first actually the beach. This is this is just applicable to Apple's own camera where they believe and other analysts believe Apple will actually incorporate this AR technology into the cameras, into the iPhone software. And then they would allow developers to take advantage of kind of, of this API to then use it within their apps. But they want this AR feature to be able to recognize real-world objects. And that would also require them to kind of create this database of you know the, the actual lens within the app, being able to recognize this is a peach, this is a stop sign, this is something else that would then give it reference points. Uh, we have seen... Oh, I can't remember the name of the app a long time ago where you held it up, you showed the street, and a bunch of businesses popped up. Now, for those of you that are watching this, um, they're watching a demo from Osterhot Design Group. Now, this is a 50-person company based in San Francisco. Apple has taken on their this man named John Border, who was the senior optics manager, manufacturing exploration engineer. He joined Apple in September, and he used to work for this company. So... A demo for people that are listening is basically there's an iPhone and then there's a a lens, a glasses like type product, right? It's a pair of glasses and they put it in front of the iPhone and you can see basically a row of different apps, um, different things pop up when they're looking outside on the street in San Francisco. But again, augmented reality, it's, it's, it's here. Now we also have another report that supports 
not only is Apple looking to add an augmented reality aspect into their camera, Apple is specifically working on a pair of digital glasses. Now, this is according to Bloomberg from earlier this week. Apple is in the early product testing phase, and you could say it's a pair of glasses that's similar to Google Glass. What they're doing really is think about this because you have to think how Tim Cook thinks. He thinks logically and in a business mind as well. It's maybe not the most innovative thing. We get, Don't get me wrong. We, we're probably sure Apple has some sort of eyeglasses product that they've been at least playing with in their mind for more than the past few years, most likely even at the same time or when Google was doing it. But Apple wants to branch off. What is their most? What is Apple's most successful product today, Beach? Oh, iPhone. iPhone, right? Yes. So they had the Apple Watch, which was a, an extension of the iPhone. All right, fine, not the biggest seller. But if the iPhone is the number one selling product, wouldn't it would be smart to make a product that branches off of that? Guess what? A pair of glasses that would talk to your phone. That dude, would be that. Dude, I would do that. I mean... Rather than having to pull my phone out of my pocket, I'm just wearing my glasses. That is a game changer. Do you wear glasses? I wear sunglasses. Okay, well, see, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, awesome. I, the only time I don't wear sunglasses is when I'm in the studio. True. Although I, I, I could do that. I mean, I could be that guy. Well, they're going to have some sort of shade technology so they could be clear <laughs> or dark. It could, it, it could be, it could be that. Yeah, like, or do you have those glasses that when you go in the sun they turn, they yeah, tint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, they, like they tint. Blue like, blockers or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the blue blockers has that dude that does the rap <laughs> on the infomercial all the time. Yeah. <laughs> he was like freestyling about blue blockers. You're like, yeah, I'm going to get those. <laughs> so um, Apple is in the exploration phase with these digital glasses. The idea is that they would connect wirelessly to your iPhone, show you images and other information um, in the wearer's field of vision. They and use augmented reality to assist in that. According to here, Apple has already ordered small quantities of near eye displays from one supplier for testing. Um, but if you expect these to come out anytime soon, if we even see these digital glasses or <clears throat> eye glasses, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> or eye <laughs> lenses, oh, I mean, you know, you could. They're probably just going to call them Apple Apple glasses or Apple lenses, whatever they call them. <laughs> um, but you got to ch- call them something cool because Snapchat is spectacles. I mean, that's kind of that cool. Pretty right? sweet, yeah, that's pretty sweet, actually. That's pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, but Apple would release them at the earliest in 2018 if they do. We also know Apple's been known to just scrap projects when it just hasn't come together correctly for them. Yeah. You you might even if you didn't all know this. I mean, the Apple iPad was a project or a tablet device that they had been basically had in their back rooms for at least 10 years before they actually put it out. Really? So they wait for the technology to be ready. It's not uh, like they're doing this two years. They they see they, like a trend maybe, and then they're like, oh, now is the time yeah. to get it. Well, you know, they've done that with uh, OLED screens, with wireless charging, with uh, curved displays, <laughs> bigger screens. I mean, you know, they and now just, glasses. <laughs> they, they, wait, wait, they wait for a trend to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But quite honestly, anyone who's an Apple fan knows that Apple tends to jump on board a little later when they feel um, the timing is right. So again... Apple camera augmented reality, Apple pair of glasses augmented reality based. And this story, I didn't really put it out earlier um, a few weeks ago just because it was kind of one of those quick mentions. But according to Ming-Chi Kuo, who is the Apple rumor extraordinaire from KGI Securities, he had released a report outlining that he believes part of the reason why Apple kind of scrapped their car plan, right? We talked about the Apple car, which... All indications say it's a no-go. It's being reevaluated as more of a, a system that could be bought out or integrated with other cars, but it's not an actual car anymore. I just want to make that clear for people that are that are still asking me, like, where's the Apple car? Well, as of now, it's it's nowhere. But Ming-Chi Kuo believes that Apple is working on an augmented reality system for your car. That's that cool. would be useful. Yes, definitely. Like, I don't know how many people... There's a... Was it an Audi product that we've seen at CES that had a crazy like yeah, augmented had, reality like, heads up display, thing. right? Yeah, yeah like yeah, cool yeah. concept stuff. Even something as simple as BMW has this thing where it projects the speed of your car on the dash. Oh yeah. I've seen that. At first it was weird to me, but then it becomes totally useful. Yeah, I was just watching I forget what movie I was watching the other day. It was either James Bond or Mission Impossible. <laughs> and they're doing all that stuff on the screen, you know. I think it was James Bond. 
not, was it not recent? 100%. Was it the recent Bond? Yeah, I, think I haven't seen a, the recent one. I think one. it was like a, an older Bond kind okay. of. Okay. But okay. he like gets in the car with like some hot girl. And then oh, that, yeah. he like does he like waves his hand and all these specks show up on the nice. on the windshield inside the car and she's like oh my god what are you doing you know it looked cool <laughs> I'm like I want that <laughs> or you could or you could just imagine Minority Report like on your yes. car on your car screen yeah totally Minority Report when I saw that movie I was like dude yeah that's super cool that was but that you was know the awesome. coolest thing about this camera this video that we've been watching is <clears throat> this icon teleporter and it looks like. <laughs> It looks very interesting, but he does click on it, or whoever's using it does click on it at one point, and it just kind of brings up this guy. See, I think right here they click on it, and then there's a guy chatting, and oh, he does a little wave. Like, so it's as if you're talking to someone. Yeah, so I guess you're teleporting to another, you know, another place, sort yeah. of. For, at first, when I saw that teleporter icon, I thought it was like a virtual reality thing. You could teleport to someone else's glasses, maybe. You know, <laughs> Or I mean? you could just teleport <laughs> yeah just teleport to some other place <laughs> camera i don't know but that's that looks cool all right we did want to tell you at the moment uh the apple bite is up for grabs when it comes to sponsorship if you'd like to sponsor <laughs> us um we actually are going unsullied so therefore we are not influenced by any sponsorship right now we yeah. can say whatever the p- we want <clears throat> true yes thanks salesforce <laughs> <laughs> r.i.p r.i.p <laughs> All right, let's talk about Apple iPhone news. There's a lot of rumors floating around. Yeah, you might. I I am of the camp that's like, why are we talking about Apple iPhone rumors like a year ahead? But they're the out there. The last one was a bummer. The last that's one was true. like, ah, uh, when's the next one coming? <laughs> that's actually really true, right? You're yeah. like, give me something to get excited about. Yeah, I mean, again. I like literally. I I believe it was like the day after the <laughs> iPhone Seven launch, people were like. Oh, but the iPhone 8, you know. We were we were actually telling people even before the iPhone 7 even came out, you probably should wait <laughs> yeah, for the next yeah. iPhone. That's just yeah, real. That's, true. that's just the reality. And I think a lot of people feel that way as well. <laughs> According to our friend Ming-Chi Kuo, again, he put out basically two reports recently. First of all, the report that is the most kind of curious is in 2017, expect to see three new iPhones. Oh. And they'll be described as such. One will be still the 4.7-inch uh, iPhone with an LCD display and a single lens camera. The second will be again an iPhone five point sorry five point five inch screen. Sorry, five and five point five inch. Let me. There's all these sizes being thrown on. Let me rewind. There's a lot of si- sizes. Yes. There's the five inch, and then there's the five point five inch model. Okay. This, we'll yeah. have a dual uh, dual lens camera as well, LCD based. And then the third would be an OLED-based camera. So remember, we were all hoping that iPhones would just completely transition to OLEDs completely, at least the flagship models. But according to the reports and rumors, only one of those three phones will actually be an OLED display model. And the reason why a report supporting this, according to Bloomberg, is that display makers are struggling to meet the iPhone output in 2017. So OLED displays, first of all, right, there's major advantages. They're more energy efficient. They provide deeper colors. Right? Everyone has seen one. You know when you're looking at an OLED. You just do. But Apple has a few suppliers. The four largest are Samsung, LG, Sharp, and Japan Display. Apple also has really stringent requirements for to pass their quality testing. And so even with those four dis- four display suppliers and OLED's low yield rates, that's why we might only see, again, I say might because this is a rumor report, we might only see one phone of the three to have the OLED display. And that one will be the premium priced phone too, Of course right? it'll be the premium It'll be like $300 more or of something. Of course it'll be. Of course it'll be, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, and that'll be the hardest one to get. Yeah, it'll be sold out. And guess what? To me, what's a little even more frustrating is that you know that that one is going to be the lar- most likely will be the large screen iPhone. Oh yeah, yeah, with right? the best, with the best camera, with the, the best with, with uh, the best everything. camera. So to me, this is this is awkward to me because now remember the days where there was one single model, or at least if you had two different sized iPhones, you were still getting the same phone. Yes. Now you're essentially creating a product line with three different phones. So you have a 4.7 inch 
LCD screen with a single lens, a 5.5 inch display with LCD and the dual lens camera, and then a 5.5 inch OLED display with a dual lens camera. Like, come on. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot for consumers to chew on, you know. It's exactly the opposite of what <laughs> they used to do. Yeah, totally. It's, and if these things all do hold true, which a lot of these reports, and this is not just one person saying this, you know, this is Bloomberg combined with Ming Chi Kuo from KJ Securities. That to me is troubling. That if I want, we again before, and yes, times are a changing, but before you knew you were getting the best. The iPhone was the best iPhone you could get. Yeah. Now there are three iPhones you could get, and one of them is the best iPhone you can get. Yeah, there was a time when you'd say, oh, I have the iPhone, the iPhone. Now it's like, I have one of the iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Oh, you know, I I decided not to get the OLED. Oh, you don't have the iPhone. Oh, yeah. You don't, you don't want to be that guy. <laughs> you don't want to be that guy. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't like the direction that this is heading. It's just... Again, the word fragment, it just make it just doesn't make it feel like, oh, I have the actual the flagship iPhone. We used to feel that way. Yeah. This is this is it. You gotta make the iPhone great again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want a large screen iPhone. That's what sucks. I would want an OLED phone. I, I don't want, want I don't want a large screen one either. And I probably the OLED's gonna be on the biggest one. Of course it thinking. is. Yeah. Of course I don't is. want a big one either. So I don't think it's gonna really affect said. me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's we'll we'll stay in the mature space right now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> AirPods launching more rumors, including um dates of late November and December. This is according to French retail site website Fnac. Fnac. They posted AirPods for pre-order with a suggested shipping date of November thirtieth. No one knows if that is true. Apple has not even commented on that. All we know still from Apple is that it's sometime later. They you know, did, I've been seeing this from Apple a lot. Like shipping times are not, fu- you know, they're not solid anymore. It's like we might ship it on this time. Yeah, that's interesting. It's, it's times are a changing. <laughs> I keep saying that times are changing. Yeah, they are. Uh, here's some other news just in regards to your current iPhone sevens. We told you the story about how there were two different modems. Uh, inside <clears throat> the phones, depending on which carrier you're with or whether or not you're an un- if you had an unlocked version of the phone. So just a quick recap. This was based on a report from Cellular Insights that reported and clearly showed that the iPhone 7s on AT&T and T-Mobile were using a different modem. This It was an Intel modem, LTE modem, whereas the Verizon and Sprint ones were using a Qualcomm LTE modem. And the tests found that specifically when you have a hard time getting a signal, let's say you're at one, I guess it's one dot now, right? They don't use bars anymore. They use dots for LTE. That the Qualcomm modem consistently, it was like 75% faster with data speeds than the Intel-based one. That's that's a huge difference. That's a huge difference. So now a new report here um, combining research from Twin Prime and uh, shared by Bloomberg says, reports again, Apple may be throttling Verizon's iPhone 7 LTE performance. And this is, we do know that there are different modems in each one, but what it's reporting is that specifically the Verizon iPhone 7, which again, we know has the faster Qualcomm based modem does not reach the data transfer speeds that it is capable of hitting. Hmm. So the the hardware from Qualcomm is capable of a maximum theoretical download speeds of 600 megabits per second, while the Intel modem tops out at 450 megabits per second, okay? But this research found that the Verizon iPhones are only marginally outperforming the AT&T iPhone 7s, which people are saying, look, they're significantly faster. Why aren't they hitting the threshold? Why aren't they hitting these the highest speeds they can. Why is it only minimal? Why isn't even something significant? So field tests are just saying, hey, it's a little faster. No, there is no there is no direct answer in the statement from Apple. They say that there is no discernible difference in the wireless performance of any of the iPhone 7 models. That's a statement from Apple. Uh, I could read it here, but that's basically the summary of what they're saying. Although we have found from Cellular Insights that for sure, there is a clear difference, specifically when it gets to low 
signal performance. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for Apple to say it here, I'll just read this statement from uh, <clears throat> Trudy Miller, their spokeswoman. Every iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus meets or exceeds all of Apple's wireless performance standards, quality metrics, and reliability testing. In all of our rigorous lab tests based on wireless industry standards, in thousands of hours of real-world field testing, and in extensive carrier partner testing, the data shows there is no discernible difference in the wireless performance of any of the models. But based on reports, that is not true. <laughs> That's a bummer. So, look... If we don't know if anyone is limiting this, if even there's a, a software you know tweak or a firmware tweak that Apple has enabled on the Qualcomm modem to prevent it from reaching higher speeds, no one's gonna say that. No one's gonna outright come out and you know say, yeah, this is what we're doing. But at the moment, it's still curious of the Qualcomm modem that is capable of doing more is not doing more. Hmm. And it 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 doesn't have to do with the infrastructure from Verizon's side, so it well, it seems like you would point it towards Apple's side, but we'll we'll have to see if we hear anything more from this. That's very interesting. I mean, uh, we know that app or not Apple, AT and T throttles you. <laughs> yeah, if data you're from on data-wise. unlimited data, and if you get over, if you pass sixteen gigs, is it sixteen gigs? Yeah, on AT and T, if you pass, or no, 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 it gives you a warning when you're at sixteen gigs. If you go over 22 gigs, then it says we're going to start throttling you on your yeah, unlimited again, data, which is basically not having unlimited data. It's un it's un unlimited data. <laughs> <laughs> it's the un unlimited plan. So I mean, you could you could weigh your Verizon versus AT and T, but they're both someone's throttling you somewhere. It's it's <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. Pick your poison, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying. Pick your poison. Exactly. Here's a story that I need to, I must follow up on. We've butchered Apple forever about this whole touch disease situation where uh, multi-touch functionality or just touch functionality on iPhone 6s would stop working. And so this is, according to Apple, a design defect specific now that they've kind of acknowledged that an, with a new repair program for the iPhone 6 Plus. So this is to address complaints about the manufacturing issue. Uh, there was basically a chip that would get loose and would sometimes cause the touch display to be unresponsive, specifically in the iPhone 6 Plus. So uh, Apple describes it as multi-touch issues. What you can do under this repair program, which, fine, I'm glad that Apple has created this repair program, yeah, but I also, I also think it's a little unfair for, uh, for another reason. But here you go. The repair program is Apple will fix the affected six plus devices for a service price of one forty nine. Okay. So they're gonna make money off of their defective phones. To a certain degree. I mean, let's say, okay, how about this? Yeah, no matter what, they aren't gonna be making gobs of money, but they are making money. I'm not sure what the margins are, but okay, so yes, you're right. Here's here's the thing that bothers me though, is a lot of these phones are out of warranty mm. and were people were being turned down from getting them fixed. So there's plenty of people that had to basically, what is the best repair program for iPhones? Buy a new iPhone. Yeah, like, exactly. Buy the next iPhone. Yeah, we even had callers who said that they were told that they just had to buy a new phone. I remember we had a voice a voicemail about that. And I'm also curious because they say this is specific to the iPhone 6 Plus. <clears throat> I had many people saying it also affected their iPhone 6. Yeah, I, I can't speak to that, but... So that's bad. I've heard it from I've heard it from <laughs> y'all. Yo, that's bad. I've heard it from both sides. I just think that there's a lot of people that out of warranty already had to deal with this. I don't think it's fair if this is see Apple saying we'll repair this, but they aren't necessarily outright acknowledging that it's a defect. They're just saying, oh, some devices that may exhibit this multi-touch issue here will help you out. But again, when it's out of warranty, like if it's if they acknowledge it was a defect, they would have to cover it, but they're not. They're just yeah. saying, oh, it might affect you, so we'll offer you this plan to fix it if it is affecting you, not we outright screwed up, so we're going to make this a free free repair. be interesting to see if they change if you know if they change their policy on this and say, okay, there was a problem, and we'll fix it for free. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. Come on, Apple. Step up, baby. <laughs> we spend lots of money on you. Yeah, baby. Come on. Step up, baby. <laughs> Shoot. I got to say, though. When I, when the old headphones, I'm this is so small, but Please with the continue. old crappy headphones they used to sell, that would always get when, torn up. Yeah, one of oh my, my one gosh. of them would go out. I would go there and I'd say my headphones broken, and they would always give me a free pair. Yeah. So that's 
That's a positive, everybody. That, that's a good apple. Good apple. Good apple. <laughs> Let's. I don't. I don't understand when we read news stories that aren't positive. People are like, "Dude, you guys are just rain, raining no. on Apple's parade." So far, the Apple glasses that we saw earlier, awesome. There's lots of good stuff. Do, do you know how many Apple products I own? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, come on. <laughs> you hate Apple. Yeah. Go home. Go home. All right. We love Apple. Thank you, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsor our show. <laughs> that would be funny. They yes. don't need us. They don't need us. They don't need us at all. No. Uh, a new report here. Apple, we know about their whole Apple TV platform. I just wanted to throw this in. I forgot to add it into the show. PlayStation View arguably not arguably in my mind the best tv streaming service available right now unfortunately they recently struck a deal where they are losing some viacom channels like comedy central mm. mtv i don't care about yeah. comedy central is probably the biggest hit comedy yeah um and I, there was one other viacom station that is getting removed from the package which is a bummer but playstation view the service will now be available for people who own an apple tv to watch on apple tv so Funny enough, right? Sling TV's streaming service and uh, Sony's PlayStation View service now both on the Apple TV. Apple, where was yours? Where was yours? <laughs> we asked you to do it. We asked you to make it happen, and you didn't make it happen. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> you watch Game of Thrones? Where's my bell. Shame. Yeah, shame. Shame. <laughs> shame. <laughs> yeah, we got no. Yeah, find, <laughs> find the shame bell. We'll bring it back. Yeah. Um, back. While you look for that, I'm going to talk about Apple and also their content acquisitions or original programming that they're looking for through the Apple TV. Now, Apple has shown that they're willing to bid on some projects, at least if it benefits their ecosystem. They have they did acquire James Corden's um, carpool karaoke segment. Again, James Corden will not be in it, but they're going to basically take that formula, take that idea. Uh, Apple Music also, to complement that, a series like a bio series called Vital Signs featuring like it's kind of like a biopic of Dr. Dre that is supposed to have some interesting stuff. And then we've also heard of Planet of the Apps. This is kind of like a contest show that is still in development. And the I know they're talking to developers still. I, I know a few developers that have said, Oh, I applied for it, I'm in the running. So uh that is still happening. But those are really the only big three content pieces. But the question that I have to say is we know that content is king. Apple knows that content is king, but they don't have enough exclusive things to make people just want to buy an Apple TV. And I think that that's the, one of the things that they've missed on. There's no streaming TV service. They have, they are sitting on billions and billions of dollars, but guess who's investing in all of this original content and programming that we are going to see Netflix and Amazon. You still don't have a Netflix here, no. do you, but do, do you want do you, should, do you want me to shame uh, Apple TV right now? Yeah, please. Okay. Shame. Where's shame. the bell? Shame. <laughs> shame. I can't show this shame. on the TV screen, by the way. It's okay. Shame. We just, shame. Shame. Shame on you, Apple. Shame. shame. The uh, so Apple was in a bidding. Actually, talked to Chris Rock specifically for uh, you know potentially getting some comedy specials with them, but. Apple ended up not at least bidding or coming to agreements with them. Guess who did? Who Amazon, without uh, Netflix? Netflix, <laughs> a two-show comedy. He's, the, he's dude. the greatest comedian in the world too, right now. Like that's a that's a big big get for a your two, network. Two episode or two comedy special deal that's reportedly awesome. at forty million dollars. Chris Rock exclusive to Netflix. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that. It's gonna be awesome. Like this is this is the type of stuff we're talking about now. Apple at least was able to secure early rights on iTunes to show off uh, Michael Moore's Trump land documentary. No. So you'll, you'll see that early, but again, Netflix is killing it with exclusive content. Like yeah, yeah. you based on what's on Netflix versus what's on TV. I hear people talking more about Netflix shows than I hear them talking about TV shows these days. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. By far, by far. Yeah. And unless it's like walking dead or something. Yeah. <laughs> and there are a few, don't get me wrong, there are a few key shows that are still worth watching on TV, but I just feel like things have shifted now where you're not out of the conversation if you're not watching TV anymore. Exactly. You're you're in 80% of the conversations Yeah. if you're just on streaming services. Unless you're like me and just watch golf all the time, then, you know, don't really have anything to talk to anyone about. <laughs> well, how about, uh, what, what's the latest golf golf uh, tournament Tiger coming Tiger Woods coming back. He's coming back oh, in you, two weeks, baby. They've said that. 
They have said that for like three years. I know. He, I, I went to the tournament in Napa the other day. He was supposed to be there and he didn't show up. <laughs> so it's totally upsetting. Oh, wow. Like one of your, I'm sure because, you know, you go way back. So you love Tiger during his prime. Oh, yeah. You know, you liked prime Tiger versus post Tiger. I followed Phil Mickelson around. Oh, that Phil was, Mickelson. That was that's pretty awesome. Incredible. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's awesome. Was, that's like, yeah, following legends around. It's kind of le- cool. a, legend. a legend. A living legend. Legendary. It's like working <laughs> with you, Beecham. A legend. living legend. Living legend. Yeah. All right. So anyways, Apple's still kind of really behind from the content standpoint, which is frustrating to me because I always felt they could have gotten ahead of that a lot earlier, but they just didn't. Yeah. So I, I'm not going to play, you know, no more. We already did our shame on Apple TV. We did, <laughs> we, for shame. Let's go on to some happy news. Nintendo Super Mario Run. The oh, yeah. The one-handed, one-thumb uh, version of Mario that you will be able to play on your iOS device um, for iPhone and iPad. That has given been given an official date of December the 15th. Hello. You can, Send my alarm. You can get a free version of the game, but if you really want to unlock all the features, it's going to cost you $9.99. That's not bad. That's not bad. See... I flinch, <laughs> but I'm still going to buy it. Because it's an app. Because it's an app. You're Dude, like, oh, it's $10 like, it's app. like app, like, I think the most, well. The most expensive I, app I think I bought is like $4.99 maybe. Okay, the most expensive app I bought and then I was really pissed about because they made a cheaper version of the app later for no apparent reason was I have a sling box at home. Oh, yeah. And I think the original app was like 30 or 40 bucks. <laughs> And then they released like they released like a ten dollar one like three months. I'm like, wait, what? Why? why? It's the same. It's the same app. They just decided to cut the price down. This makes no sense. That is frustrating, man. Yeah, dude, dude. Hope I hope you shot an email off or something. No, (laughs) I'm not like that. I just kind of like it allows me to be like, yeah, that was wrong. That was wrong. But ten dollar. Come on. This game. Have you seen this game? Is there a link? I've seen it, baby. Uh, Did I pop a link in there like for, for you to see it? Me you can't tell me. Okay, fine. fine. The license oh, is, is awesome. It is Mario. This is a five dollar game. Straight up, my man. This is a five dollar uh, game. Uh, you're you're not sure about that. This is a five dollar game, bro. I don't know. I'm just I'm such a fan of Mario. I'll I am pay. too. Fine. I'll pay for fine, it. Fine. What if they yeah. made it fifteen bucks? Would you still pay? You would. Probably. They, just because my kids. Twenty. You would you would still buy that for twenty. See, you're that. G- no, I don't know about twenty. Uh, twenty might know. be reaching. Uh, twenty. I think you'd still pay twenty Maybe. bucks for this. Maybe. I don't know. If you could play it on your iPad. See, you can't play it on your Apple TV. If you could play this on your Apple TV, that'd be sick. Yes, that would be sick. Anyways. But I'm try- I'm still trying to get that. Nintendo Classic Edition that oh. sold out in like five minutes. <laughs> well, uh, every day, uh, what is, what's today? Is today the 18th? I don't even know what day it is. Today it is, is the 18th. 18th yeah. Walmart at 2 p.m. every day, they've been supposedly releasing units. No! You should have talked to me. Well, about. I boycott Walmart, so I won't even go there. Okay, well, that's that's fair. Yeah. They'll, they'll have more by the end of the holiday season. You still got about another month and a half to go, so don't even worry My about that. My wife better come through. Wife? You better come through, baby. Wife? Wifey, come through. Come through, wifey. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, and then the story that honestly deserves ridicule, but also, you know, some respect. Apple has released their new book. This is not a Mac yeah. book. Yeah. This is not an iBook. This is a book. It's an actual book. It's a book. Designed by Apple in California is the title. A nice white hardbound covered book. God, it's beautiful. Chronicling 20 years of Apple design. It includes... Many images that you have seen on Apple promotional photos. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It also, I said on my show, it's like, look, Apple just took a bunch of pictures from their marketing and put it in a book. (laughs) Like, okay, fine. The disassembled G4 Cube, that's dope because I have that. That's awesome. A real fan. I'll tell you, you know you're hardcore if you have a Power Mac G4 Cube. That's that's what I'm talking about. You know what? This book, it's it's too thick. It needs to be thinner. They need to make it thinner. (laughs) It's also there's so there's two sizes of the book for really? people that don't know. Yeah. There it's not they're not gonna call Apple Book Mini an Apple Book Pro. Although, <laughs> damn, based on the pricing, they should. The one one of the books, let me see if I can find the sizing on here. I can't I can't remember. Oh, here we go. The small edition of the book is ten point two inches by twelve point seven five inches. That will start at one ninety nine retail. Uh go see if you can go to this video yeah, clip. Yeah, yeah. And uh the Everything Apple Pro, dude is on fire. Uh, did an unboxing. He bought the book, obviously just to show it off and get, how blank get, get a ton are. of views. 
Um, but also the larger size book, which he purchased, 13 inches by 16.25 inches. $300, y'all. Three honey. Three honey. Wow. I mean, the original iPod, again, the original iPod retailed for $400. This is a book, y'all. A coffee table book. And I know, don't get me wrong, coffee table books that are large format printed do sell like for around $200 ish or so. Like when they're like supposed to be fancy. Okay. That picture, I have that poster. <laughs> I literally have that poster awesome. um, on my wall and it says yum or something. Cause it's like, look like gumdrops. Whenever something. I see that picture, I think of uh, that movie Zoolander when they're like, the files are in the computer. They're inside the computer. <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> you start trying to break the computer. <laughs> It's this computer right here. Yeah, it's the the original iMac gumdrop looking, the Bondi Blue They're uh, in model. The computer. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, there you go. That's crazy. I do also. I do have to give myself a bad apple uh, from last week's episode. I want to make this right to our listeners. Um, we talked about an emoji story, <clears throat> and for some reason, we talked about. Uh, I called. Kind of the traditional, you know, head wrap, a uh, haji, but it's a hijab. hijab. But I like flipped them, and so I would like to say I'm sorry for that. Oh, wow. I didn't do it on purpose. Okay, so I'm sorry. All right, <laughs> apology accepted. Hey, you know we 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 make we we do the show on the fly, so sometimes stupid stuff like that happens. I'm sorry. Accidents happen. Ac- accidents happen. All right. Should we get to our voicemails? Let's do some voicemails. Let's get to our voicemails, y'all. Again, if you guys want to be a part of the show, call us at 1-800-616-2638. Let us know what you're thinking about. Let's talk. Let's go. Okay. First call. Here we go. What's up, Beach and Tom? This is Aaron Hope from Durham, North Carolina. Uh, just calling. Uh, I had a just a, a mention about the uh, dongle gate. Uh, especially when it comes to the lightning connection or the lack thereof a lightning connection. Um, just wanted to say I have an iPhone 6 um, and about a, a, you know, a 2011 MacBook Pro, and I haven't plugged my phone into my computer in probably two years uh, just because, you know, like iCloud Drive, iCloud Photos, and, you know, just all of those things are already taking place uh you know, in the background. So I just haven't had a need to plug it into my computer at all. So, but that's, that's my comment. Thank you. Talk to you guys later. Love the show. Peace. Thank you for the call. That's we call. we had to show love to that because I know there's plenty of people that don't plug in their, um, their phones. Yes. You know, what I do. Cause I don't really trust iCloud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like old school. I will admit I'm old school like that. Like I do wirelessly sync my phones sometimes, but I tend to be like, Oh yeah. Once in a while, I definitely plug it in. I plugged mine in last night actually yeah. because because I had like I took a ton of music off it to make space and then I wanted to put all that music back on and it would have taken yeah, it takes like a an long. hour it takes, yeah, it takes a lot to do it wirelessly it so with the cable it's like pretty fast exactly you know? so see there you go yeah that's why there you go okay number two numero dos hi my name's Josh I love listening to your show I have a quick question. Um, I'm wondering if Apple will ever have an AI that's actually useful. Um, I've tried Siri every time they come out with a new iOS, and I continue to think she's worthless. Um, Do you think they'll come out with an AI kind of like Google's that actually works? Um, If not, are there other AIs that I can add to my iPhone 7 Plus um, and use instead of Siri? Thank you. Have a great one. Bye. (laughs) Come on, don't tell me she's worthless. Mm, she's not worthless. She she look, she is has been getting better every time but still may not be up to your standards. I will say in the past there were some <clears throat> other options for kind of like assistance, but really look, Siri's going to be the most integrated with your phone. I would quite honestly say and we've told people this before, you just use Google, the Google app. Yeah, yeah. Cuz totally. you can there is a Google app, and you can do voice commands. And it's again, it won't be on the level of what the Pixel phone has, which is by far the sweetest virtual assistant AI I have seen and experienced on any phone. Um, it just it does stuff really well, and it's only going to get better. It's even just year one, and I think it's some people are like, oh, it doesn't do that much different stuff. I think there's a lot of subtleties. We're like, wow, this is the direction it is heading. So my advice would just be use the Google app and you know, for voice command stuff. But really when I set alarms or um, reminders, which is really the only thing I use my Siri for, 
I, I have to play I just, music. Um, see, I don't even do it for that. Really? Yeah. Mm. I do it for like play this song or or playlist alarms set timers play stuff my like workout. That. I ask her questions, scores, raters. Oh, so you do use her? See, then you use her a lot. I, I use it a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah. And it probably annoys people around me. <laughs> It's all good. But Google is like so contextual. Like she'll answer. Oh man, it's crazy. It'll answer with like context and um, different things you didn't know. And you can follow up without refer just by saying an additional, like an add-on question in a normal conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what makes it. That's what, what makes it. What about, so. does Cortana available on the iPhone? I don't think it is. I don't believe so. It, if I'm wrong, someone can slap me, but I, I'm I don't pretty think sure it it's not. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's not. But that's another good one too. Cortana's yeah, cool. Yeah. But if you want to stay, you know, I'm thinking he's talking about staying specifically with the iPhone. Uh, just I would use Google's. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's its own app. It's not integrated, but it it, it will probably do the job pretty well for you. Yes, so. and it does all the things that Siri does too. It'll it'll set alarms and all that stuff, reminders. You True know. that. So it's cool. That's okay, it, man. That's all. That's all we got today. Okay, okay. Again, just one more last time. Call us one eight hundred six one six two six three eight. That is going to be our show for this week. Uh, just a heads up, because of the Thanksgiving break, we may not have a show next week. Yeah, I, we are not scheduled to have a show next week. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy the holidays with your family or friends, whether you celebrate Thanksgiving or not. Just enjoy that time off. We will return after the break, just like in Marvel movies. Triumphant. We the will apple return. bite will return. Dot, dot, dot. True. True that. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, everybody. Take care. Be safe. Peace.